Hi there, welcome to the exam AZ-900 Microsoft Azure Fundamentals Study Guide. This is episode 8 of 63, Regions and Availability Zones. I'm Tim Warner, happy to be your instructor. Our focus today is the Azure region, which is a geographical area quite constrained, that is, within a country or province, that consists of a collection of Azure data centers. Now, for security reasons, Microsoft doesn't publish the street address of those data centers, and I've talked to plenty of Microsoft people, even folks on the Azure development teams and evangelist teams, and many of them have never gone to a data center. Operational security is super important to Microsoft for obvious reasons. These regions, as you can see in this diagram, are spread throughout the world. Microsoft is constantly developing more and more. As of this recording in very late February 2020, Azure has 57 regions worldwide available across 140 countries. Now, we can presume that more than one data center exists within each region. But again, part of the abstraction of the cloud is that Microsoft's not going to tell us that specifically. Microsoft has organized the regions into geographies, and this is to help businesses who have data sovereignty requirements. For example, maybe you're a company in the United States and you want to make sure that any data or Azure services that you replicate to multiple regions for fault tolerance and high availability purposes all stay within, for example, the continental United States. So for that reason, if you do a Google search for Azure regions, you can go out to azure.com and you can get a detailed listing of these geographies and their associated regions. Something else you should be aware of is that Microsoft has partnerships with certain governments to create separate Azure clouds. For example, in the United States, there's Azure government, which includes even some undisclosed regions that are considered top secret, and the only folks who would be able to see or interact with those government regions are authorized people who are within those government bodies. Related to government are sovereign clouds. Again, the text on this slide's a little bit small. I wouldn't expect you to make it out. But for instance, I'm looking in Europe and I see that there's a couple German sovereign clouds. These are public clouds, but they have stricter access requirements to correspond with, in this case, Germany and their particular laws in terms of how IT and cloud computing happens. So you've got the Azure public cloud, a subset of the Azure public cloud, for sovereign nations and governments. And then there's a couple extra totally separate air-gapped region collections for government, for example, in China and in the U.S. government. Some additional points to ponder about regions are, when you're using Azure, how do you decide what regions to place your services in? It might not be regions plural, it might be region singular. Well, first of all, you should be aware that not every Azure service is available in every region. Normally, when an Azure product reaches general availability status, it's available in at least most regions. This is another reason to keep up to date with the Azure Updates page available just at azure.com. Just look for updates. Here's a short link, actually, timw.info PBR. You should also understand that some Azure services are non-regional. For example, the Azure Front Door or Traffic Manager resources, both of those are load balancers, special purpose load balancers that can distribute traffic among multiple instances of your application around the world. They themselves, that is the Front Door and Traffic Manager among a few others, are not tied to a specific region. But other than that, other than these simple exceptions, when you deploy in Azure, you always deploy to a particular region and your choice of region is going to be A, are the Azure services you need available in the region? B, what region makes the most sense in terms of minimizing latency from the people who consume those resources into the Azure data centers in that geographic region? And C, do you want to spread your load across multiple Azure regions to put your services and put your applications closer to your user populations around the world? And or do you want to spread or replicate your environments to different regions, as I said earlier, for disaster recovery purposes? These are all important planning principles in Microsoft Azure. Lastly, you should know that resource costs can vary by region. For example, if you go to the Azure pricing page, we'll formally treat the Azure pricing page in the tail end of the AZ-900 objectives, and you look up virtual machine runtime costs, as you go across different regions in the world, you'll sometimes see an appreciable price difference from one spot in the world to another. Why is that? Things like physical plant costs, the cost of electricity, the cost of human labor, because those factors are variable around the world, that explains the price difference you'll see across different regions in the world. 
Azure availability zones are modeled on AWS Amazon Web Services availability zones. And what you've got here are individual data centers or potentially multiple data centers organized within a single region across which you can spread your resources. These are independent data centers that are geographically close to each other. For example, my home region is East US or East US 2. Both of those regions are availability zone aware, and if I were going to deploy, say, three identically configured web servers, I could place each one in a separate availability zone and know that each instance of my VM will be protected against various levels of failure. Within the data center, if there's a network switch or power failure or something that knocks out an individual server or rack unprotected, even across data centers, because if a lightning strike were to happen, let's say, that knocked out availability zone one data center, I would have additional instances of that VM available in other availability zones. So availability zones are a way to give your application and your services, particularly virtual machines, high availability. Now, you should note that not every Azure region supports availability zones, and you should also know that availability zones themselves do not protect against regional failure. Remember, the availability zones are data centers within the same region. If the entire region were to go offline for some reason, unless you had the service or resources deployed in another region, you would be offline. Now let's illustrate some of these concepts practically. I'm in the Azure portal, portal.azure.com. I'm going to open my favorites list and navigate to resource groups. Resource group is the fundamental unit of deployment in Microsoft Azure. Everything you deploy always is in the context of a resource group. You can look at a resource group as a special kind of container. Let's click Add, and I'm going to create a resource group now within my Microsoft Azure sponsorship subscription. I'll call it AZ900 in honor of this exam. And notice that we get a list of all of our available regions. Now, these are the cloud public, the Azure public cloud regions. And as you can see, I can can literally go all the way around the world. What I'm not seeing in this list are sovereign regions because I'd have to be part of that nation, country, province in order to access those regions. And I'm also not seeing Azure government cloud regions because that's an entirely separate list. Need to know you have to be part of the government, etc. I'm going to choose East US. Now, sometimes Microsoft has more than one region in the same geo area. East US is a good example. East US and East US 2. I'm going to choose East US 2. I won't add any tags. Let's review, make sure that validation passed, and then we'll create that resource group in that that region. If you point your web browser to azurespeedtest.azurewebsites.net, this is a really neat web application called Azure Speed Test 2. It measures the latency of your web browser to the storage service, the blob storage service around the world in different Azure regions. And as you can see here, I'm getting live data. My best latency values are coming from East US 2 and East US. This is a good web application to use in your environment to test which Azure regions are fastest. They give you the lowest latency connection. Really nice tool. I believe a Microsoft employee is the author here. Let me scroll down to the bottom. Yep, looks like the all of the attribution and contribution info is down at the bottom of the page. Really nice site I wanted you to be aware of. Let me refresh the resource groups list again, and we can now see my AZ900 in East US 2. Now, what about deploying a virtual machine? Let me show how that interacts with both resource groups and availability zones. I'm going to click Add in the Virtual Machines blade, and we can start by specifying the subscription, and yes, we'll choose our resource group. I'll give the virtual machine a name. Now, region. Notice that it's not forcing me to choose the same region as the resource group. I can, if I want to, put this virtual machine in South Central, even though it's in a resource group that is in East US 2. I know that confuses some people that I teach and consulting clients. The thing is, resource group is just an organizational entity. There's no idea of latency with that. So in a sense, the only reason why the resource group's location is important is just for your data sovereignty and organizational purposes. That is to say, a resource group can be in one region, and the resources you deploy into the resource group can be from any region that's valid for your environment. Okay? So I've 
I've got that. And then we've got availability options. This is where you can choose the availability zone if it's available. Notice that in South Central US, it's not available. So I'm going to have to open this up. Let me actually go to East US 2, which happens to be coincidentally the same location as our AZ900 resource group. And this time, if I open up availability options, I can choose availability zone. And then I can choose which of the three available zones in East US 2 region I want to place this server. Now, if VM1 were going to be a web server and I wanted to do high availability, I could put, for instance, this VM1 in availability zone 1. And then during my subsequent deployment, let's say if I'm doing VM2 next, I would want to choose availability zone as my option and then use, say, 2 here. Now, you might be thinking, well, isn't that introducing latency? If we're putting two replica web servers in two different data centers in the same region, those data centers may still be separated by miles or kilometers. Here's the deal. Microsoft puts additional layers of network connectivity within a region between all data centers. So the idea is that you should have no noticeable latency, even though you're spreading the virtual machine across different data centers in the same availability zone. Last thing I want to show you is service health. If we do a search in the dashboard search bar for service health. It's a good idea to come here from time to time. What it does is it shows you by default a geo map that's corresponding to your active or current subscription. It picks up only those regions that you're using within that subscription. And by default, it selects all services. What this means is that you get a very fast filtered view of any Microsoft service issues that can affect your resources. And if you just want to cut the view down to a specific region, you can untick select all and then just do a search, for example, East US and East US 2. And you want to see no service issues found. That's a good thing to see. But if there are issues that Microsoft's had on its side, it looks like I've had one resolved service issue that could affect my resources in my regions. You can click and you can get detailed information, including a tracking number and root cause analysis. As you can see down below, I'm having a difficult time the way that I have my resolution. It's not showing it too nice, but you can get a detailed breakdown of exactly what happened when and why. For learning resources, I want to point you to the Azure Regions documentation at timw.info forward slash AZ Regions. For availability zone documents, go to timw.info forward slash AAZ. Great. Well, this was an especially interesting lesson, at least from my perspective. I hope you liked it. You can reach me at Twitter at Tech Trainer Tim. View my Pluralsight courses at timw.info forward slash PS. And my website is techtrainertim.com. Thanks again, as always. I'll see you around.